The Suzuki SV650 is widely regarded as one of the best all-round bikes on the planet. A 2017 version will set you back $5,535. But what if I was to tell you I bought one for $1,736. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you my 2017 SV650. So here's my Suzuki SV650 bike that I bought from the salvage auction. I have now done all the repairs on it. I have got a license for it. It passed the inspection. It's insured. I'm riding it around on the road. Looking at it for track days. I won't really ride it around uh, the roads that much. And I'm going to show you what I did to it and how much each part cost me. So starting from the top, it's now got a key in it. If you didn't see the last video, go and watch the, the last video and you can see what's what, what, what was all wrong with it. But it's now got a ignition barrel in it. This was a right pain in the ass to, to fix. I had to take off these, they're called the triple trees. We call them yokes in, the Engl in England. And, um, and I had to like burn the glue off. This, this thing is glued in and that was a bit of a pain in the ass. But, um, but yeah, so I replaced the ignition barrel and also I replaced the fuel filler cap and a, a seat lock thing so it also got the same key but also I replaced the mirrors again like I don't know 30 bucks or something and also like handlebars these are super bike handlebars and the old ones were bent but uh I actually like the position of these a bit more. It's a bit more of an upright feel to it. Um, this was broken, the uh, the throttle grip. So I replaced that. Um, also replaced uh, the brake lever and the clutch lever with new ones. On this year's SUV, these are the, the fork caps, right? So they're non-adjustable. So I found some adjustable fork caps on eBay. So that means I can screw them down to put a bit of pressure on the fork spring um, if it's bottoming out when I'm braking. So I also replaced the um, the fork oil in the fork as well as the fork seals and I put a 20 weight fork oil in because I'm not a, a light geezer um, I'm sort of 200 pounds ish at the moment I'm trying to lose weight but you know not always easy is it especially if you like a swift half. Anyway uh, when you brake like the forks compress and when they come back up like you just want them to come back up but you don't want them bouncing up and down and I've noticed with this with the new fork oil in they just go down then come back up so that seems like it's worked pretty well but I think I've put too much fork oil in because this is the cable tie which lets me know how much of the fork is being used and um, as you can see I'm not using it all I think the, I think it should go up to about there the cable tie so I'm going to take some some of the fork oil out G give me a bit more movement in the front fork because uh, I can always use the preload adjuster if I need it this is the the radiator this is off an earlier SV650 model I think it's from a second generation I was supposed to do a track day six weeks ago the original one the day before I rode the just rode the bike around the block it was leaking so I still went to the track day and um and just did marshalling the, for the day and they gave me a 50% credit. So at least that kind of paid half of the $170 uh, for the track day. And also the old radiator is, um, is in for repair because on this one, I can't fit the fan on it. They're the wrong, the wrong connectors. So. Uh, so anyway, I should get the, the old one back, but it doesn't matter for the track day. This will be fine for the time being. Staying on the front end, I cleaned out all the internals on the on the brake calipers, cleaned them all up, also put in Vesra brake pads. They had the old uh, original Tokikos in, which were, well, were not up to much, and the Vesra ones are, are much better. I got this new panel as well, so I'm pretty pleased with that. I uh, didn't bother really doing anything with this panel, it's just as it was. Um, so going down to this was there was this was all broken and um, so I bought a new uh, foot plate and and and, and brake lever also like the master cylinder master cylinder was broken so I replaced that as well 
didn't bother doing anything with the exhaust pipe. Oh yeah, I also replaced the air filter in the bike as well. The old one was really dirty. And coming back around here, I cleaned the rear brake caliper and also put in new brake pads in that. They were really worn. <laughs> <laughs> like whoever had this bike before me, like they used to use the rear brake pad, the rear brake a lot, and I hardly ever use it. The rear shock is the original shock. I've not done anything with that. Uh, to replace the shock, it's I don't know anything from five hundred dollars upwards. So that's an expensive, something expensive to replace. So yeah, I'll think about that. Maybe we'll do do something like that in the future. And. So on the bodywork side you can see I put these uh, frame sliders on it which should protect the bike if in, in case of a spill. So the hardest thing on doing this repair was actually changing the engine sprocket out. I wanted a 14 tooth engine sprocket. The original um, Suzuki sprocket is a 15 tooth, right? Now a 14 tooth sprocket is going to give me a better acceleration out the turns on the track day but it's going to be give me a lower top speed so I just wanted to change the gearing. And, uh, but the, uh, the engine sprocket is, is literally glued on at the Suzuki factory with like red Loctite. And I had this big bar and I just, just couldn't, I couldn't have a socket on it with a big bar, I couldn't, couldn't move the damn thing. And um, eventually I took it down to the car repair place where I'll get my car done and uh, they had got their air gun on it and went <laughs> and um, got it off in about 10 seconds. Now we're gonna get down to the kind of the last thing, which is, the tires. But before we get to that, do me a favour and check out my novel, Tobago, featuring John Silverback. He's like James Bond on steroids. It's free to read on Amazon Kindle, link in the description. This was kind of the most expensive <laughs> most expensive thing I bought over 300 bucks. They're track day tires, they're, they're road legal, but they've been specifically designed for track day, so I've just been out on them and they they're really good tires man and what well, i'll tell you something interesting the the back tire on these like the recommended pressure is about like 23 psi you know that's so much lower than you know old race bike was when i when i ran dunlops on it so that was like 32 or something it just shows you how far tire technology has moved on in the last 10 years or so oh yeah also obviously i changed the the oil filter changed the oil as well I put this little thing on, it's supposed to protect the brake lever in case when you're doing track days and shit. And it looks looks pretty cool as well. So my overall thoughts on the SV650 Suzuki are it's an absolutely stonking good bike. I've absolutely loved blasting it around today. Um, it handles really well and now the, the brakes are working really well and uh, accelerates hard um, out the corners and I've, I haven't even really touched the, the performance envelope of this bike so I'm really looking forward to doing that on the track day and I can hardly wait. Next time on the channel I'm gonna slag off my Triumph Bonneville T100 that I also bought from the salvage auction. We're gonna dig into the numbers. I'm gonna tell you how much I spent on this bike at the auction and would I have been better off just buying a used SV in good condition. Track day shenanigans. And don't forget to check out my novel. Later, geezers.